Good morning, class. Welcome to EKG Chapter 1, Cardiac Anatomy and Physiology. Did you know that the heart is a muscular organ that is about the size of a man's fist? That it can pump enough blood to meet the body's metabolic needs? And that the normal heart can beat anywhere from 60 to 100 times per minute? And that it circulates anywhere to from 4 to 8 liters of blood per minute throughout your body? The heart is presently located in the thoracic cavity <clears throat> between the lungs in the cavity called the metasternum, which is above the diaphragm behind the septum. The heart is positioned off-centered. It is slightly more to the left of the thoracic cavity. The top of the heart is called the base, where the bottom of the heart is called the apex which is the pointy left side of the heart. The heart is made up of different layers. These tissue layers are called the endocardium, the myocardium, and the epicardium. Sometimes you will see some places say that the heart has four layers instead of three where they would include the fourth layer, which is the pericardium. The heart's innermost layer, the endocardium, is made up of a thin, smooth layer of epithelium and connective tissue and lines the heart's inner chambers, valves, cardiac tendinitis, and palpatory muscles. The endocardium is, a con is continuous with the inner layer of the arteries, veins, and capillaries of the body, therefore creating a continuous closed circulatory system. The myocardium, which is the middle layer, is thick muscular layer that consists of cardiac muscle fibers or cells that are responsible for the pumping action of the, of the heart. The heart's outer layer, which is called the epicardium, the epicardium contains blood capillaries, lymph capillaries, nerve fibers, in fact, the layer that is surrounding the heart is called the pericardium, which is a doubled walled sac that encloses the heart. The pericardium serves as support and protection and anchors the heart to the diaphragm and the great vessels. The small amount of fluid that is found between the pericardium is called the pericardial fluid, which helps minimize friction between layers as they rub against each other with each heartbeat. Next, we will talk about the heart chambers. There are four different heart chambers that we have in the heart. We have the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the left ventricle. The right atrium is the receiver of blood that is low in oxygen that comes in from the upper and lower extremities of your body. It also has oxygen level that is anywhere from 60 to 70% and it has a very high concentration of CO2, which is carbon dioxide. Then you have the right ventricle. The right ventricle is responsible for pumping blood into the lungs. The oxygen level in the ventricles are the same as in the right atrium. They are very low, anywhere from 60 to 75%, with a very high concentration of CO2. Once the oxygen poor blood is received into your lungs, it is then transported into the left atrium. The left atrium receives freshly oxygenated blood from the lungs where oxygen levels are anywhere from 100% and CO2 level is very, very low or non-existent. Then it trickles down into the left ventricle. The left ventricle is responsible for pumping blood out 
into the body. It is what we call the major pumping system or pumping chamber. It is responsible for your body receiving the oxygen rich blood that it so needs in order to operate. The heart is divided into right and left side by the septum, which is a muscular band of tissue. The septum is separate the septum separates the atria is called the intraatrial septum and the septum that separates the ventricles is called the intraventricle septum. There are four valves that help move the blood throughout the heart and back into your body or into your lungs. These are four one-way valves in the heart where you have two sets of atrial ventricular valves or AV valves and you have two sets of semilunar valves or SL valves. Semilunar valves separate a ventricle from an artery and have three half moon shaped cuspids. The term semilunar means half moon. There are two semilunar valves. You have your pulmonic valve and your aortic valve. Your pulmonic valve is located between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery. And your aortic valve is located between the left ventricle and the atrium. The AV valves are located between the atrium and a ventricle. They are supporting the cardiac tendinitis, which, it, which are attached to palpatory muscles, which are muscles that are out pooched from the ventricular wall and anchor the valve cuspid to keep the closed AV valves from flopping backwards and allowing backflow of blood. There are two AV valves. You have your tricuspid, which is located between your right atrium and your right ventricle, and it has three cuspids. Then you have your mitral, or your bicuspid valve, which is located between your right, I'm sorry, your left atrium and your left ventricle, and it has two cuspids, be it bicuspid, where this one has tricuspid, three cuspids. The valves open and close in a specific sequence and assist in producing the pressure <coughs> excuse me, granulated needed between the chambers to ensure a smooth flow of blood through the heart and prevent the backflow of blood. Valves closure is responsible for the sounds made by the beating heart the normal love dub of the heart is made not by blood flow through the heart, but by the opening and closing of each one of those four of your heart valves. S1 sound is when the bicuspid and tricuspid are closing. That is the first sound you hear when you're taking a blood pressure. S2 is when the pulmonic and aortic valve are closing. And it's the second sound you hear, which is the sound where we count to check someone's blood pressure. Between the S1 and S2 is the heartbeat and expels its blood, which is called systole, which is the top layer of your blood pressure. Between S1 and the next, I'm sorry, between S2 and the next S1 is the heart rest in filling with blood, which is called Diastole, which is the last beat you hear of the heart, which is your bottom number in your blood pressure. Next, we will talk about the great valves of the heart. There are five great valves in the heart which are located at the base of the heart. You have your superior vena cava, or your SVC. The SVC is the large artery vein 
that returns deoxygenated blood to the right atrium from the head, neck, and upper chest and arms. Then you have your inferior vena cava, or your IVC, which is the large vein that returns deoxygenated blood to the right atrium from the lower chest, abdomen, and legs. Then you have your pulmonary artery. This is the large artery that takes deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs to load, to load up on oxygen and unload carbon dioxide. It is the only, I repeat, is the only artery in the human body that will ever carry deoxygenated blood. Then you have your pulmonary veins. There are four large pulmonary veins that return the oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left atrium. They are the only veins within the human body that will carry oxygenated blood. Then you have your aorta. The aorta is the largest artery. I repeat, aorta is the largest artery in the body. It takes oxygenated blood from the left ventricle to the systematic circulation to feed all the organs of the body. And this concludes a lecture of today about the anatomy of your heart. If you have any questions about the anatomy of the heart, I will do a recap in our next lesson as we go along discussing the blood flow of the heart along with what veins feed the heart to make it work. Thank you and I hope you enjoyed this lecture of your heart.